Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling Media. We continue our coverage of the sport. We head back to Binghamton and Binghamton University, the home of the mighty Bearcats. Kyle Borshoff has been added to the staff there, joining his brother Jason, and he joins us now, does Kyle Borshoff. Kyle, first interview as a new assistant coach for Binghamton. How's it going? Things are going well, Scott. I'm uh, really excited to be here and, and glad that uh, I could be on the show today. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. You and I go back to your time at American University, uh, and you had some strong mentorship there in coaching, uh, coaches that weren't afraid to make tough decisions when they had to, uh, most notably uh, Coach Cody. But talk to us a bit about your time at, at American University and what you took away. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, Coach Cody is one of the great mentors in my life, uh, absolutely. Um you know, he kind of he kind of bet on me when I was younger. Uh, you know, having my brother Jason in the program already, and uh, he was really one of two coaches that was recruiting me out of high school um, to come to American. So, you know, when I got to go there and compete for Coach Cody and, and wrestle at American, um, I continued to learn for <laughs> for four years of wrestling, um, and that's something that I think is so important going into college and being able, being willing to learn, uh, to change things, to adapt uh, to new situations, um, to change strategically, to change technically. Uh, and those were all things that Coach Cody was tremendous uh, in helping me get better at. Um, my freshman year, I, I had a whole staff of great coaches. You know, along with Coach Cody, uh, Joe Henson was our assistant coach at the time. Um, and Joe and I uh, remain very close to this day. You know, we talk regularly. Um, we also had a guy named Ruslan Majinov, who was from Kyrgyzstan and who was fourth in the world at one point, uh, kind of as my training partner at the time. And Muzaffar Abdurakhmanov was our other coach that year. So uh, definitely had a staff of great coaches, and, and uh, that was the right fit for me. And um, I definitely learned a lot in my four years wrestling there. And then I got to coach with Mark for a year uh, before he left and went to Oklahoma, where again I learned, you know, being a coach is not the same as being a wrestler. Uh, and I learned a lot from Mark that year as well uh, from a coaching standpoint. So you've had a variety of different influences. You have the opportunity now to learn from somebody I have so much respect for in Matt Derlin. He's been there, done that from the operations standpoint to training partner to assistant coach to coach at a couple different spots now. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of respect for the Dernland legend that is his family as well. Um, i got to believe you're pretty excited to work with Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Um Matt's been awesome. You know, I've been here since, uh, I guess, May, uh, when I came in early in May. And Matt's already helped me evolve again as, as a coach. Um, and as I came into a new environment, you know, I spent nine years in, in Washington, D.C. And I had this opportunity to come up here and come back to New York. Um, and when I talked with Matt initially, when we were talking about the job, and he kind of explained his philosophy you know, recruiting New York, building a team from uh, New York, having the goals of NCAA champions, all Americans, uh, building a top dual meet team. Those are all things that align with with everything I want to do. And uh, you know, obviously, my dad wrestled here, and I'm from a couple hours away, and my older brother's coaching here. Um, so, along with you know Matt's influence as a coach. And as I learn new things from him, I'm also in an environment uh, that I'm excited to be in. Uh, I, I guess you'd be fun. called a legacy, wouldn't you? I mean, it, <laughs> at some point in there, legacy, I think, you know, how that works. Uh, this is in the fraternity system, I would think so. I, You know, I got to walk past my dad's picture every day. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I go from my office to our wrestling room, uh, we walk past our athletic, I guess it would be the wall of fame. And every day I have to walk past... Uh, you know, my dad's picture up there and, uh, you know, there's, there's coaches up there. Steve Erber's up on the wall there who was, you know, a coach here for a number of years. And I walk past these guys every day and kind of reminds me of, you know, what we're striving to do. You know, we're trying to build all Americans. We're trying to build a great program here. Um, 
So it is, it's pretty cool to, to walk past those guys every day. Of all the autographed pictures and moments in my career in my office, perhaps the best thing in my office is the photograph of my father. And uh, I, I struggle every day to live up to what I believe his expectations are of me. And, uh, and of course, the way he taught me. So I can appreciate the fact that you have to walk past or get the opportunity to walk past uh, your father's uh, uh, picture on the wall there and of course all that he accomplished in Binghamton there was a time when it was on the ropes Lois DeFleur canceled the program and sold off everything and and the the future and the history of the program was up for grabs and uh, uh, there's some people that stood up Billy and and uh, Billy Baldwin and and others that really stood up for the program and and uh, I gotta believe your father uh, you know at, at at, at least was disappointed that uh, it had reached the point that it did. But wrestling at that point really was at, at a bit of a low point. And Binghamton was one of those uh, wake-up calls. And, and I always thought of Binghamton as a very important part of my career because I really launched on to or latched on to uh, helping uh, that program and raise awareness of the program's demise. So, you know, having you guys there, the Borshoff brothers and Matt Dernan leading the uh, – leading the charge, and then really producing an outstanding year last year. My expectations of the Bearcats, uh, not only in conference, but out of the conference, is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I, I think that having high expectations is something that you know we all have as coaches. I think if we don't have high expectations for our team, then we're letting our team down. Mm. You know, if we're not expecting these guys to compete nationally and succeed nationally uh then we're letting them down because i know you know I, i'm new here but i know that when matt and my brother were on the road recruiting these kids they were recruiting them with the goals of being national champions and all americans um and that's something that we're going to hold them to and hold ourselves to as well uh as we're moving forward with this the young team that we have uh so it's definitely an exciting time to be here um, I got in, I think, at, at the perfect time with having 25 uh, underclassmen out of the 30 guys on the roster. Wow. Uh, so, you know, I, I definitely think when you're younger, it's, it's easier to adapt to a new coach coming in uh, than if you've been in a program for four years and, and you have a new coach coming in. So I'm excited for that. Um, absolutely. Coach Sterling uh, mentioned in an interview I did with him recently that uh, – uh, this is the first full group of guys that have actually been recruited by uh, Coach Sterling and his staff and his recruiting process. So these are the guys he wants. Uh, these are the guys he wants you guys to to uh, to coach, to help bring through that championship process, not only, again, in conference but on the national scene as well. Uh, you guys started all off with Rutgers. What can we expect from the team? Who steps up? Who are the guys – on the squad, the youngsters that uh, you're, you know, you have high expectations of. Yeah, we um, we have high expectations of all of our young guys that are coming in. You know, at 125, uh, we're going to have Thierno Diallo, uh, one of the few out of state guys. Uh, you know, he's probably going to be in our lineup at that weight. Um, we still have wrestle offs uh, to determine the official lineup, um, <clears throat> but you know, if Thierno's in there, it's going to be. He got injured last year after having a pretty good start, um, so he's hungry to start off on the right foot this year uh, out of the gate. Um, at 133, we've got uh, another guy that's uh, it's his first year on the team, uh, Jake Nicholson, who was a junior college guy for the past two years, and he's new to us. Um, 141, we likely have a returning uh, guy Dylan Caruana, who's been here for a few years, he's one of the older guys on the team. Uh, Going to be have to be one of the leaders on the team this year. Um, Kenmore, New York. Yes, Kenmore, absolutely. So just a few hours west of here. Um, so you know he's definitely got family and and uh, and friends that make it out to Binghamton to watch our matches. Um, Forty nine. We've got uh, another guy that's been around for. A year uh, in Joe Maestro, uh, 57, you know, 65, potentially having the Dupre twins, but still, like I said, figuring it out with our wrestle-offs. Um, 
74 with Jack McKeever back in the lineup and down a weight. We expect big things from Jack. What uh, was the idea of going uh, taking Jack down a weight? What was, what was the thought process there after having such a tremendous year? Um, with, with Jack, I think it, it really came down to last year he was having to eat his way up to weight uh, at 184 by the end of the season. So he was an extremely uh, undersized 184 pounder who was having success at the weight. Um, 174 is, is going to be a much more comfortable uh, weight for him this season. He's stronger. Uh, he's going to be bigger at the weight class. And we expect big things out of him uh, at that weight class. Um, at, at, at six foot tall, he fits, uh, he fits the 174 pound better than he fits 84, huh? Uh, yeah. I mean, with, as this, as the season went on last year, Jack was, he was getting, you know, Jack does a, a great job of dieting right and eating right and doing everything right with his weight loss. Mm -hmm. As he started going through that, uh, you know, his body weight naturally was dropping. So I think at the end of last season, uh, the coaches that were here at the time had the discussion with him of, you know, you're weighing out well underweight every day. Let's assess getting you down to 174 for next year. Um, and Jack was on board with it. And I think Jack's excited to be down at 174 where he's going to be stronger. Uh, he's going to be bigger. And, uh, he just has a style that, you know, he's, he's extremely tough to wrestle. He's hard to score on. Uh, he can reattack and, and score at any moment. Um, so when he's shutting these guys down, uh, at 174, um, that extra size he's going to have is going to be big for him. We're talking uh, with with Kyle Borshoff, assistant coach for the Bearcats of Binghamton University. Uh, a lot of people say upstate New York. I always say upstate New York. It could be anywhere in New York. I'm going to say upstate New York. And by the way, Joe Mastro, you might yep. let him know that uh, his style typifies a nickname, and that's the Maestro. <laughs> I, I, I believe his ability to orchestrate any kind of a match he would like to see, I think is exciting to watch. And you're saying Ma Mastro's at 57? 49. Really? Yes, Joe is another guy that, you know, when Matt came in here and, uh, you know, my brother's been here and I'm here, uh, our philosophies on, on weight loss all pretty much overlap, you know, and, and we preach to our guys that they need to be doing this process well in advance. You know, we're talking to our guys in the summer about eating right and eating their weight down to weight. So we're not having our guys starve weight off. Uh, Joe's been a guy that's been committed for the past, you know, four or five months, especially uh, to being on a good diet, um, to putting the right things into his body. And as he's been doing it in this process over the past few months, uh, he's going to be a strong 149 pounder. And he's not killing himself to to get the weight off because he's he's committed to the lifestyle, and uh, it's something that's hard to do, but it shows us, I think, as a coaching staff, that when you get guys that are committed to losing weight like that and listening to what we're saying and buying into the system, um, you know, those are the guys that are going to have success and. Uh, that's something that a lot of our guys, we've been talking to them since the beginning of the summer. You know, don't balloon up. Don't get up to 200 pounds and then hope to make 157. Um, and we have a lot of guys that are buying in and listening. And the leadership on the team has been tremendous from the older guys um, that maybe a few years ago didn't lose their weight right. And they can attest to how much better it is. Uh, to sacrifice a couple months and and make weight the right way than trying to lose 20 pounds the week before. Uh, I, don't re I don't recall you ever really sacrificing in weight loss. It was always like you were right on target. Is that how um, you remember it? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. That was something that, you know, I started as a 41-pounder, and as a 141-pounder, I was probably weighing in the low 60s in the summer. Um and between my sophomore and junior year, that was a conversation that Coach Cody had with me about going up to 49. And when I became a 49-pounder, I was the same size as I was as a 41-pounder. Um, but 
I, I was eight pounds bigger. You know, I, I didn't have to cut that extra eight pounds. Um, and diet was something that Coach Cody always preached to us. So right. it took me a couple of years to figure it out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You know, when I was a freshman, I thought that uh, Oreos and ice iced tea, <laughs> sweet iced tea was a good, a good diet because three Oreos only weighs, you know, two tenths of a pound or something like that. So, why, why, I, you know, wrestlers are what, the only ones that are going to know that. <laughs> How much do Oreos weigh? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I knew everything as a freshman. I'm not going to pretend like, you know, I had bought in right away. And looking back on it, I wish I had. And that's, you know, now as a coach preaching it to our guys, uh, I hope they buy in right away. You know, we want them to buy in early because uh, I think people learn from their mistakes. And uh, looking back on, I had much more success at 149 uh, than I did at 141. And I think a lot of it was because, you know, once I committed to eating the right foods and, and doing the right things uh, in and out of wrestling practice, you know, doing well in school and, and doing everything right, uh, that led to my wrestling success. Um, and I think it's an easy sacrifice to make when you only have four opportunities to do it. You know, when you get four years to, to compete and succeed, um, you have the rest of your life to you do whatever else you want after we're done. So, Our guest today has been a, a fine young man who always appeared much bigger than his wrestling weight. I always thought he was 65. Uh, but uh, he always had the ability to apparently lift Oreos. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, and, and if I was a coach, I'd probably lie to my athletes telling them that each Oreo was worth a pound. <laughs> because let me tell you something getting that off that one oreo the package of oreos to the sweet tea getting it off is a whole lot easier than putting it on that's absolutely true um and i think the problem with lying to our guys like that is that we the guys on our team are too smart <laughs> right <laughs> they're too smart now. they have and with google you know they can google something pretty quick and Say, hey, coach, that's not right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, it actually they're too smart sometimes to tell them stuff like that. It's 2.3 ounces. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think that is funny. Oh, man, you've got your work cut out for you, and I know that uh, you, your brother, Coach Sterling, are just uh, so excited for the season uh, to start. We are as well here at Takedown, but uh, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. Uh, your insight uh, is, is, uh, is warm. It's friendly. It's spot on. Your observations are uh, are keen, and I love the historical fact with your uh, your father's history at the university as well. But uh, you come from a good family with good underpinnings, and and uh, it's been fun watching you compete. It's even more fun for me watching you grow into the coach that you become. Looking forward to seeing how the year progresses, Kyle. Yeah, me too, Scott. Um, you know, I'm I'm really excited to be here and. I think we have a good young group of guys, and we're, we're prepared to have success. We're doing everything uh, one step at a time, and as each day passes, you know, we're getting a little better. Uh, we can see it in practice, um, and that's the goal. You know, for us, the goal is March. So we're going to do everything we can to continue to evolve and prepare and be ready for the end of season to get guys to the national tournament and to bring home some accolades uh, back to Binghamton. It's all about peaking, and they are doing it the right way in Binghamton. We can't wait to see the results in the conference. And, of course, at the NCAA is this year. They'll be in New York at Madison Square Garden. Binghamton Bearcats, they've been in the hot seat today. Our special guest, Kyle Borshoff, always good to catch up with the uh, former American Eagle. Kyle, thanks for the time, brother. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me on, Scott. Really appreciate it. and. You know, I think it's it's really good for us to be on here and be able to get uh, the Binghamton name out there. Uh, it's uh, we want everyone to know across the country where Binghamton University is in New York, uh, and that we're preparing for success. That we're preparing to succeed. Absolutely. I'm Scott Casper. Our guest again, Kyle Borshoff. You've been watching a special edition of the Nike Hot Seat Takedown Wrestling Media. Appreciate you watching. <laughs>